Last time, we made a transformer that took a context-free grammar and turned it into a PDA. This time we'll do the opposite, and we'll take a PDA and turn it into a context-free grammar. Thus, we will establish that context-free grammars and PDAs are equivalent in power, and they both describe the context-free languages, CFL. Now recall that when we converted context-free grammars into PDAs, we first translated them into Chomsky normal form and then into a PDA, where Chomsky normal form was a simplified version of a context-free grammar. We're going to do something very similar with PDAs. We're going to make some simplifying assumptions about PDAs, which will greatly, which will make it much easier to um, deal with. So here are the assumptions that we're going to make. So a simplified, simplified PDA. First, we'll assume it has one accept state. Now, to have one accept state, what we'll do is we'll make it so that the original machine had a bunch of accept states. Okay? And what we will do is we'll translate that. So let's call this one A and B. So we'll translate that so that the A state and the B state now have a transition that goes epsilon, epsilon, arrow, epsilon to a new state that is a unique accepting state. All right. So now we'll know that there's exactly one. So we'll know that F is equal to exactly QF. The next thing that we'll do is we are going to guarantee that the stack is empty on an accept. Now, how will we do that? The way that we'll do that is we'll make it so that our start state, which we'll write as Q0, okay, and our unique end state, um, and our unique end state, QF, okay, we're going to transform those so that we have a new start state, which is Q0 prime, and what it does is it's going to it's going to transition to Q0, and it's going to do epsilon epsilon arrow dollar sign, and dollar sign is some symbol that is not otherwise used in the program, and then we're going to make it so that when we come in to QF, what we do there is we pop everything off, so we have a rule that says that on an epsilon and a little g, then we convert that into epsilon, and then we go epsilon dollar sign arrow epsilon to our new qf, which is the now the real accepting state, where each one of these g's is inside of gamma, and dollar sign is something that is not inside of gamma. So the idea here is we pick some symbol that's not being used by the PDA, and we make it so that we push that in the beginning. So we have a new start state, and we push that on the beginning, and then we find the end state, and we make it so it just consumes everything until it gets to dollar sign, and then it goes to dollar sign with that. Now notice that these assumptions right here are the assumptions that were already true for our 0 to the n, 1 to the n machine. It, all, it already did this. Okay, but there's another assumption that we're going to make. And so the other assumption is, is that we always push or pop, never both or none. In other words, our machines, they always have the ability to push, which means that we go from some, we, we go from some sigma and epsilon to something in gamma. They're allowed to pop where they go from something in sigma, gamma, to epsilon, but they also have the ability to ignore, 
And to ignore, you have something in sigma, and then you have epsilon, arrow epsilon. And then they also have the ability to replace, where we have something in gamma to something in gamma. And we're going to say that these things never happen. We're not allowed to do those. Now notice that our 0 to the n, one, zero to the n 1 to the n machine follows this rule too. Let's just remind ourselves what that is. We go to our start state. We push on a dollar sign. In this state, we loop. If we see a 0 in the input, then we push on a happy face. If we see a 1 in the input and a happy face in the stack, then we pop that off. If we see a 1 in the input and a happy face on the stack, then we pop that off. And if we see nothing in the input and a dollar sign, then we pop that off and go to our accepting state. So our machine already followed these rules. Now, I do want to say about what happens if there are ignores or replaces. What do we do? Well, if there's an ignore, then that means that we have some state, qi, and there's a transition from qi to qj that is labeled with some character, epsilon, arrow epsilon. So what we're going to do is we're going to translate this into qi is going to go when it sees a c, sorry, when it sees a c, and an epsilon, it's going to push on a new character. Let's just make it, um, let's just make it an exclamation point, and it's going to go to some new state, which we'll call star. And then what star is going to do is it's going to go when it sees epsilon and an exclamation point, then it will go pop that off and go to qj. Now what we can do is we can make like we can automate this by making it so that there's a dollar, there's a star for every single state that all it does is it sees the exclamation point, pops it off, and goes to that one. Now for replace, what we can do there is that if we see a qi that's going with c a arrow b to qj, then with that what we can do is we can say that qi, when it sees a c, and an A, it will pop it off. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go to a state named B slash QJ. And what it does is it sees an epsilon and an epsilon, and it pushes on a B and then goes to QJ. And so this is, we can kind of think of it as, let's call, let's call this star slash QJ. So our original machine had, let's say, 10 states. Now it's going to have 30 states. It's going to have the original 10, plus it's going to have one for, actually it's going to have more than that. Suppose that it had two symbols in gamma, plus 10 states. Um, then it's going to have the 10 original states. It's also going to have 10 extra states for star slash a state. And then it's going to have one for each symbol that it might pop that it might need to push. So it's possible to transform any PDA into this something that recognizes the same language but follows these rules. But in this case, we only have these four. Okay, so with these constraints, we can now talk about actually doing the conversion. Whoops. Um, we want to paste this and put it All right, and what page are we on? We're on page four. So 15, four. Okay, and so this will be state A, B, C, and D. So the input to this algorithm is going to take a PDA. So that means it takes Q, sigma, Q0 inside of Q, delta that goes from Q maybe sigma, maybe gamma arrow power set of q cross maybe gamma and then it has exactly one except state which is qf 
Okay. Now, what our output is going to be is our output is going to be a set of variables, a sigma, an r, and an s. Now, I have not figured out how to explain this in any, um, what's the right word to say this? I don't know how to do this in a way where it's an intuitive why this is going to work. So you'll have to trust me about why this is going to work and we'll, we'll work through it. The set of variables is going to be q cross q. It's going to be pairs of states. So that means that we're going to have a, 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 b, a, c, a, d, etc. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of those. Actually, I guess we'll let's write this on the next page. So here are our um, here are our uh, our variables. There's going to be um, a a a b a c and a d. There's going to be b a b b b c b d. There's going to be C A, C B, C C, C D, D A, D B, D C, and D D. Those are what all our variables are. Okay, now the start variable is going to be Q0, QF. So in that case, what is the start variable for us? Well, the start state is A, the accept state is D, so that means that the start one is going to be AD. That's where we start. Let me move this down a little bit. There we go. The start is AD. Okay, so now all we need to do is say what the rules are. And the rules um, are kind of simple. There's three categories of rules. The first rule is is that um, is is that qi qi will go to epsilon. So that means that this one will go to epsilon, this one will go to epsilon, this one will go to epsilon, and this one will go to epsilon. We're really gonna. This is gonna be kind of crazy. How this is gonna work. Move that. I don't. I have really no idea how much space this is going to take. What we're about to do, so I may have to do lots of fiddling to make things work. Okay, so that's the first rule. The next rule is is that, uh, and this is for all qi inside of q. The next one is it will say for all qi q j. Q, K, Q, I, comma, Q, K will go to Q, I, Q, J, Q, J, Q, K. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we're, for every combination of all three different things, okay, so that means that we're going to have, so remember we look at all, all, every in-between point. So AA, it's going to go, let's actually just do a single one of them um, because it's going to be so tedious. Let's just do the one for AA. AA will go to um, AB, BA. It will also go to A C C A. It will go to A D D A. And that's because A is the origin point and this A is the end point. So A B B A A C C A, etc. Okay, so every one of them is gonna have three extra rules. So for instance, A B right here, it's gonna have a A A B because A is the midpoint. 
it's going to have um, it's going to have a B. Oh yeah, I forgot to do an A up there. So this also needs to have a A A A. Um, a B B B and a C C B and a D D B. All right. Next, what we're gonna do is we also have to, and this is the one that actually is the most meaningful one. It's gonna say that um, that Q I comma Q J can go to A Q R comma Q S B if the following is the case. If when we look at delta and we're in state Q I and we see an A and an epsilon if we get back r comma t and then if we're in state q s sorry that's q s not just r q r if we're in state s and we see a b and there's a t that we're popping if inside of that is q um, s Sorry, Q J epsilon. Okay. So, what this rule basically says is that if you, when you are in state Q I and you read an A, this causes you to push a T and go to Q R. Then that means that eventually, inside of Q S you're going to get to QS and you're going to see a B and that's going to cause you to pop a T in which case you're going to go to QJ. Okay, so I know that that's a lot to take in. So what we'll do here, what we'll do now is we'll write out these, but I'm kind of going to ignore this page right here and let's just write out those rules. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this again. Oh man, copy and paste is amazing, huh? And we want to copy that. And we got 15, 16, 15, 6, and then we'll paste up there. Okay. All right. So here's the way this works. What we do is we look at when something gets pushed. So when does something get pushed? Here we're pushing a dollar sign. Here we're pushing a happy face. Those are the two cases where this rule applies. So because delta of a epsilon epsilon equals the set containing b and the dollar sign, that's this rule right here, that means that this satisfies this one right here, where we have a, in this case is epsilon, and t is dollar sign and qr is b. Then when does that dollar sign gets popped off? It gets popped off here. So that means that delta of c epsilon dollar sign equals d epsilon. So those two things together, that implies that um, if we're in state Sorry, if we're, if we're talking about variable AD, then that can go to epsilon, which is the character that gets read, and then we can go to BC, and then uh, another epsilon. Okay, so that means that AD goes to BC. All right, now, when is the next time that something gets pushed? Well, the next time that something gets pushed is when um, we push on this ha this face right here. So we have dollar sign of B, zero is the character, epsilon goes 
to B, and we pushed on a happy face. Now, when does the happy face get popped off? Well, it gets popped off in two different situations. So we'll have situation one and situation two. In situation one, it gets popped off because we are in state B and we see a one and there's a unhappy, sorry, there's a happy face, and that brings us to C epsilon. And in the second situation, we're in state C and we see a one and a happy face, and that brings us to C epsilon. Okay, so what those two things mean is, is that if we want to go from B to C, because B is the start state, C is the end state on both of them actually, if the thing that we see is a zero, okay, there's going to be two instances, zero, zero, then we can go to B, because that's the destination, and then where is the endpoint? Um, there's a B over here and a C over there. We can go to BB, or we can go to BC. And then what character will we consume on the other end? Well, it's a one in both cases. Okay? So these two rules right here are the other two rules that come from this main one. So let's summarize. So our start state is AD. And it can go to epsilon, BC, epsilon. BC can go to 0, B, B, 1, or it can go to 0, B, C, 1. Now, notice that there's a B, B right there. So what rules do we have related to B, B? Well, we know that every variable, sorry, every, uh, every time we have Q, I, Q, I, then that goes to epsilon. Okay, so this right here is the context or grammar that we derived from these rules. So let's just simplify it by giving them new names. So we'll say that S can go to, actually let's say S prime can go to S, and then, uh, actually let's not do it that way. I don't, why use primes if we don't have to? So we'll say that s can go to x. Notice that these are just epsilon, so that's kind of boring. And then x can either go to 0, y1, or it can go to 0, x1. And then y can go to epsilon. So this right here definitely is the 0 to the n, 1 to the n language. Actually, there's kind of a little thing that's kind of annoying, which is that um, I forgot to say that that's an accepting state. Uh, and so this actually requires that there be at least one, um, uh, it requires that there be at least one uh, 0 and one 1. If we wanted there to be another one, that means that there would be another case for when the dollar sign would be popped off. Basically, what we would do is we'd say that B would have a transition that would go to D, and then we would have A goes to B, B goes to D, and then we have BB, and so there would be another instance of Y. It would be that it could also go, like, there would be, say, epsilon, BB, epsilon, in which case this would just say X bar Y. Okay? So, what we've now done is we've shown that context free grammars can be converted into PDAs via Compton normal form in that in the schematic PDA, and now we've shown that PDAs can be converted into terms we don't, into context-free grammars. In other words, we've now shown that context-free grammars are equivalent to PDAs, and they both describe this larger category of context-free languages. Context-free languages, which we abbreviate as CFL. What we'll do next, next time is we'll talk about whether or not we have now finally discovered all 
and whether or not um, we have uh, whether or not there's anything that can't be done with a context or grammar.